And now let's meet our outstanding field for tonight's SK5K. Starting 24th in the field in car number 11 in the Homo Hot Dogs machine, here is rookie driver Matt Vassar. Scheduled to start on the inside of that row is another rookie graduate, the Big Hoss Racing USA, number 75. The DP Motorsports car from Stafford Springs, Connecticut. Would you welcome David Aroos? A third generation driver from Chatham, Mass. will be in car number 67 in the Zooty Software sponsored car. Here is Doug Meservi Jr. Here's one of the all time great veterans in the, horse, in the Horsepower Hill Farms, number 10 machine. Ladies and gentlemen, from Summers, Connecticut, starting in starting position, number 19, number 20 rather, is Dan Avery. Let's meet the defending champion of the SK5K in car number 36 in the Wicked Power Sports sponsored machine. Here is Chase Dowling. Next we move inside row number 10, driving car number double zero. This is the Membrino Racing Enterprises car, a former SK Light champion. Ladies and gentlemen, car number double zero for Tommy Membrino Jr. And then it will be car number 31, a former SK Light champ at Stafford. Hocon Industrial Gas brings us a driver from Newtown, Connecticut, Steven Kopchik. Car number 76 will be next on the field. One of the all-time great veteran drivers, the Bulls Chrysler Dodge Jeep machine. Prepared by Ronnie Bamforth from Ellington, Connecticut. Car number 76 for Tommy Bowles. This driver always runs well whenever he comes to Stafford. He is in the Lee Corporation, number 27, from Framingham, Massachusetts, John Studley. This gentleman never gives up, and tonight's a perfect example of all that. Beep Beep, the Roadrunner, the Cooker Construction Machine from Summers, Connecticut. Driving the number 81 car. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome Todd Owen. In the 14th position will be car number eight in the K&J Automotive car, a driver from Cheshire, Nick Salva. Then moving into lucky starting position number 13. This driver sets behind the wheel of a rental race car that he's had tremendous success with at Thompson Speedway. From Oxford, Connecticut, would you welcome the young and talented driver of car number 03, Troy Talman. And starting 12th will be the driver known as the Bullet from Munson, Mass. In the competitive Edge Coatings car, here is Dan Wesson. Keep your eyes on the driver of car number 82. One feature event win to his credit, the Naprico number 82 car. Quinn Christopher owns the automobile from Walcott, Connecticut. The young and talented and versatile Michael Christopher Jr. This driver looking for a second win of the year in car number 50. Flamingo Motorsports is a sponsor. The driver from Ellington, Connecticut, Ronnie Williams. Car number 17 grids next to the field from Wilbraham, Massachusetts. This is the Horsepower Hill Farms car. Ridgeway Racing Associates from Williamsburg, Massachusetts, brings us car number 17 for Glenn Ream. This driver got his first SK win one week ago tonight in car number 78. He is aboard the JG Poolin Drywall sponsored car from Waterbury, Joey Cipriano. Multiple championships, the current point leader by 30 starts next. He'll set behind the wheel of the Wheeler's Automotive Machine. From Berlin, Connecticut, ladies and gentlemen, car number 88, would you welcome Keith Rocco. This driver is a two-time SK Light champion from Meriden, Connecticut. He is sponsored by AAA Consulting Incorporated. Here is Matty Ice, Matt Galco in car number three. Moving now, position number four out of Southbury, Connecticut, driving the Stafford Pool Waters Jervis Brothers Roofing Machine. Car number 33 from Walcott, Connecticut. Would you welcome Michael Jervis Jr. And then we have car number 44. He is from Berlin, Connecticut, Tony Membrino Jr. And the men that'll bring the field around. Outside, row number one in the Causes Central Auto Sales, number 66. Ladies and gentlemen, they refer to him as the Bulldog. Would you welcome Eric Burtz? And now sitting on the pole is the driver of car number 25. He is from North Haven, Connecticut in the tick free organic tick control car. The driver is Tyler Hines. Here with the command of fire engines, please welcome Ed Nelson. Drivers, start your engine.
two of the cars from the Todd Owen camp were involved in a melee in the heat race and all of them came off on hooks. We've got Josh Woods 24 is in pretty bad shape, but 81 came off double hooked. And look at this crew. We've had a group of people around this car all night. The car's half blue now. It says Josh Wood on the roof. They're ripping parts out of that car to put in this one. And they've got it on the ground and rolling at, let's see, what time is it? The SK light feature is on the track and it's 916. All their competitors are around the back lined up ready to go and they're almost ready to roll off. This crew is absolutely unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. So I'm sure they'll have to come from the back tonight, but it would really be amazing if these guys ended up on the podium here tonight. Three wide, Matt, 24 cars come rumbling off turn number four. You won't see this anywhere in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, get up and out of your seats, wave anything you got, stomp your feet and make some noise. This is what the SK Modified Division is all about. Stafford Pride, three wide. They rumble down into turn number one with all the colors of the rainbow and the fans love them here at Stafford. Jackaroot had a dream and he took that dream to the heavens above and Mark Arood and Lisa Arood and Paul and David and Jackie and all the Arut family have kept it alive here at Stafford. The field heads off turn number four. Ladies and gentlemen, Napa Auto Parts style from the Stafford Motor Speedway. The 5K SK is now under green here at the half mile. And Burton trying to take off on the outside. And it is Tyler Hines who will beat him to the corner. But look at Burton go to work. Eric Burt, the Bulldog, said he has got to shake this bad luck off his back. They come rumbling off turn number four, and Eric Burt will lead lap number one in the competition here. Meanwhile, good racing action on the outside. High, wide, and handsome, making his presence known. Here comes the 33 of Jervis. And who's the tail that wags the dog there? No surprise at all. Keith Rocco has already moved up to the top four. Matt, I don't think Rocco's saving anything. And this is one of the few big prizes he has yet to win. So he is caught up in the draft as he whips his way into third. Look, and he's making a move on Hines, trying to crowbar underneath the 25 to move into second. There's no question about it. They're side by side racing all the way through the field in this one as you continue to watch the cars rumble and make their presence known. Meanwhile, stepping down low on the racetrack, Membrino, the 44 car. All of a sudden, he has found a home down underneath as he'll challenge for the fifth spot between the number 17 machine of Glenn Reen. Now, Reen likes these extra distance events as well. He's had a lot of success there. And look at Michael Christopher coming up on the outside, Matt. He's already up to position number eight. And remember, during the last two weeks, Mike Christopher Jr. has passed more cars than anybody as he gets around Tony Membrino Jr. The brisk pace being set by the Bulldog, Eric Burnt, and in his hip pocket, trying to move into the lead is Keith Rocco. So Rocco, up in the front, a little quicker than a lot of people had expected. He certainly is, and he isn't saving anything. Meanwhile, as you look a little further back at the bottom of the top 10, Ronnie Williams has moved into the 10th spot. He is also threading the needle through traffic rather nicely. Membrino is stuck on the inside, but off the turn, bid for the lead. As they come back to the stripe, Keith Rocco becomes leader number two, seven laps in to the record books. And he did it with a pretty powerful inside move. Burke trying to get his groove back as he moves in in turn number three. Behind him, Michael Jarvis Jr. This isn't a surprise, Ben, because the last three or four races, Michael Jarvis has been up at the front during almost every weekly event. He certainly has, and he continues to show that impressive, aggressive style. Tyler Hines is running Bracey again here tonight. Glenn Reen, who came here with an accomplishment to do. Now we've got, it looks like, eight cars running in a pack in single file formation. And the last car of that pack, Matt Galco in car number three, as he tickled the back bumper with the Glen Ream car, here comes Burt, trying to take the lead away from Keith Rocco. He is dead even as they exit turn number four. Eric Burt has his whole body in it, 
dead even with Keith Rocco in a fight for the lead. Third leader of the event becomes Eric Byrne, the Bulldog, forcing Rocco to settle back into second. Was that a play and maneuver? Gives him a tap to the bumper. Now look at Glenn Reen trying it down underneath Tyler Hines. Can't do it this time as they work their magic and head off the turn. Meanwhile, a little further back, Michael Christopher along with Troy Talman, they're also coming to the front of this field. Things are starting to get strung out further back in the field, and a lot of strategy that was thought to be played towards the back of the field isn't ready to unwind yet. Taking a position, Ronnie Williams getting underneath Joey Cipriano. So Ronnie Williams has moved into the top eight. 12 cars in the lead pack and trying to make it 13 is Rowan Pennick. Here. Here they come back to the strike. And again, Michael Jervis is trying just about everything possible to hold off the opposition of the Tyler Hines machine. Glenn Reen also is in that. Whoa, what a move as Ronnie Williams. He came, he saw, and he conquered. Williams took it in about a car length and a half down underneath. The Matt Galco machine becomes the next target for Williams, and Ronnie Williams is the fastest car on the racetrack, 19.281. But look at the move by Jervis as he rabble rouses his way underneath, the, and he is trying to move into the top three, but it looks like a little quicker is Tyler Hines in the 25. Six. Keith Rocco picks up the $125 bonus for leading lap number 13. But it's suddenly all gonna change again when they come back to the stripe. It is still a side-by-side -side battle for the lead, and Eric Burt is still holding on. Rocco starts to string it out just a bit, and while that battle is impressive for the lead, look at Tyler Hines along with the Jervis machine doing the same type of a thing. But the guy to watch is Ronnie Williams. Williams, fifth, I lied, he's fourth. I think he's going for third. Williams is a rocket ship on this racetrack. Ronnie Williams is a guy who is possessed to getting to the front of this field. And he came close to this race a couple of times to winning. Eric Byrne taking over the top spot from Keith Rocco. Let's see if Rocco gets it back. This is his power point, his happy spot on the racetrack. And Keith Rocco, he is able to blur his way back into the lead. While that was happening, Ronnie Williams said, if he can do it, so can I. Look at Williams down underneath Eric Byrne like he was stopped at a stop sign. Ronnie Williams is like Superman in a Marvel's comic book as he continues to run right in the tire tracks of Keith Rocco. They come down the front straight away. They're bump drafting like they're running at New Hampshire. If you thought the drivers were gonna ride it out for the first half of the race, you were wrong. Here comes Ronnie Williams, barnstorming his way underneath Rocco. Ronnie Williams trying to take the lead of the Napa SK5K. And it's Rocco to hold him off. Williams is all over and he continues to apply the pressure. There's no question about it. There's great racing action wherever you went. Remember, that was the car that Williams has been driving. This year is the car that Dowling won this event just one year ago in. But it is Williams who is really burning up the track here tonight. And Eric Byrne is still a factor riding in third, followed by Tyler Here comes Hines. Williams, bottom shot off the second turn. They say that's also almost an impossible move, but you wouldn't know it because here comes Williams as he now takes over the lead. 23 laps in this 100 lap event. And now Rocco is caught on the outside. Let's see if he can get inside of the 50. He has position now, but he is playing the waiting game. Burnt right there in third. A driver doing a good job of moving up is Glenn Green. He has been tough but he has to be at his best right now because Michael Christopher is behind him. They certainly are running nose to tail and really, literally, all the way back to the bottom of the top 20. It's still anybody's race left in this event. Good racing up front as well as you look back to the front of the field and a car that we have to give a shout out to, no question about it, is 
Daniel Wesson. He's been struggling all season long, Matt, and he is continuing to hold off in a dogfight battle there, and it's Steven Kopsik who's applying the pro. Oh, oh Kopsik, Kopsik is Kopsik. in trouble. Kopsik's machine expires with smoke coming from beneath the automobile. Steven Kopsik's car goes up in smoke like a Cheech and Chong movie. A as that car slammed the wall hard as he lost control, might have even slipped in his own uh, liquid as that car whiplashed around on him and a very punishing hit into the barrier. Well, here we go. They head off turn number four. You can feel your seats start to rumble now as they come down to the line. Good start, Williams pretty much even with Kid Rock as they rumble off the second turn and Williams takes advantage of things but here comes the Bulldog he's just not giving up tonight Matt and look at Jervis with that 33 car the top seven cars could fit inside a Cheerio that is how close it is slight advantage for Ronnie Williams they scamper into the second quarter Eric Burke he is trying to carve his way underneath Rocco the top three, almost three wide, heading into turn three. But that's not the only story. Look a little further back. The same can be said there. They rumble back to the line. It's Williams by inches as he works his magic down into turn number one. Joey Cipriano out of roll as he gets underneath Hines and he infiltrates the top five. Rocco on the outside trying to take the lead away from Williams. They are dead even in the middle of turn four. Also, Todd Owen is starting to pick them off one at a time as he works his way through traffic as well. Meanwhile, Rocco gets the lead back. Rocco continues to run that outside lane. But when we say he gets the lead, Matt, it's usually by just a bumper or a chrome horn. Or it's, by a molecule. That's it. Here they come back to the stripe again. Let's see what timing and scoring says. This time, it's Ronnie Williams swapping position lap after lap. No one's giving anybody an extra inch in this one. Meanwhile, Eric Burt's got the best seat in the house to watch, but he's not just a watcher, he's a player, and he's a contender in all of this. Oh, Williams drives up high, and he distances himself from Rocco. So taking the high road in turn four, Ronnie Williams. I think Eric Burt is playing it pretty cautiously right now as the sparks are flying between Williams and Rocco, and here comes Rocco on a strong. A oh, look at move. that move. And Williams gets him back on the same lap. He gives him the old swoosh. He went from the high side to the inside. He gave him the swoosh, and a brand new leader emerges again, and it is the driver of car number 50, Ronnie Williams. If anyone thinks that Ronnie Williams hasn't come into his own, they have not witnessed what we just saw tonight. Rocco had the lead for about 10 feet, and Williams got it back as they rocket their way into the second corner. Rocco has been pretty tough on the outside. Here he comes, trying to get the nostrils of that car ahead of Williams as they fireball their way into turn number four. Williams will still have the advantage, but maybe not. Rocco gets the top spot back by about a, a pebble. It is Williams back in command, but for how long? The heat is on and the traffic is starting to filter its way to the front of the field. Todd Owen down underneath. Wesson is in trouble. He is all over the racetrack. Daniel Wesson goes spinning like a top. And that is going to bring out the caution. And I think we needed to catch our breath because that was some unbelievable racing. Place yeah. your bets now on what's it gonna be, Rocco or Williams, to take advantage of things on the start. As they come off turn number four, starter addresses the field, the tension is on, the heat is up, and it's Rocco to bring him to the line. And second is up for grabs. Here comes Eric Byrne, trying to take that spot away from Ronnie Williams. The top three could fit in an Easter egg, and it is Rocco trying to run away and hide, and Burnt won't allow that to happen. He certainly won't. Burt continues to dig on the bottom. Eric Burt, the bulldog, the causes central auto sales machine. Always is a factor as he comes back into line. Williams got his tires cooled down. Maybe it's going to take a few laps to make him a big factor in this one. But Cipriano is right there underneath him in car 78. 
They're doubled up all the way to the bottom of the top 10. Now Michael Christopher makes the move from the outside to the inside as he goes into the eighth spot with car number 82. So far, Ben, I think most of the drivers have had the same strategy. Go to the lead as quickly as you can. A little bobble, Todd Owen got caught up in traffic again. He has had a rough outing so far. And Chase Dowling has now worked his way up to the seventh spot after he started this event back in the 20th starting position. Burnt in position. For the lead. Bottom shot move, Eric Burnt. Makes his presence known on the inside lane. Eric Burnt is back out by a nose, Matt, but it all changes in turn three. And here comes Eric Burnt as he gets the snaz of that car in front of Rocco. They jitterbug off the turn, and Eric Burnt is back in front. Eric Burnt puts the white causes central auto sales machine back in command, 38 laps. Here comes Rocco with a crossover. He loves the bottom. Going, going, gone. He's back in command. Wow. These are like heavyweight boxers throwing their best shots at each other. Now does Burnt have another one up his sleeve? Williams is third, followed by Cipriano. Hines rounding out the top five. And Burnt, he will wait. Rocco right now has the front of the field surrounded. Look at Dowling. He just moved in and went directly underneath the number 33 car. So Chase Dowling is up to the sixth spot from 20th starting position. Dowling is coming also back to the front of the field, but that's not the story here. The story is Keith Rocco, followed by Eric Burnt. They bump draft down into turn number one. No harm, no foul there. Boy, Chase Dowling has picked up a lot of positions in a hurry. Now he is setting Hines up for a bottom shot. And here is Chase. It's Chase. He will ab be able to torpedo his way into the top five. Chase Dowling now moves into the fifth spot in the Wicked Motorsports machine, the SNS paving car. He said he told Joe Koss and Kyle Ricky that he set this car up. He wanted to be out of the handicap, and he wanted to come from the back to the front. Will that pay off? Time holds the answer. Seven laps shy of the halfway marker in tonight's 100 lap event brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. But right now he's got to figure out a way to get by Joey Cipriano in fourth place. And Cipriano has another potent car. The ringleader of the parade. That is Keith Rocco. Stitched onto his fire suit is Eric Byrne. So those trouble in turn three. 76, Tommy Bowles spins to the bottom of turn number three and brings out the caution. So Bowles goes around in the Ronnie Bamford prepared car so we can catch our breath. I believe that is caution number three. And Rowan Pennock wastes no time to go back on pit road. As they thunder off turn number four, starter addresses the field all over again. Spotters say green, green, green. And Keith Rocco gets a nice run this time. It works to his advantage. And then Ronnie Williams sneaks back in. But here comes Chase Dowling on the inside of, of the Joey Cipriano car as they come off turn number four. And it looks like Dowling is going to firecracker his way underneath that number 78. But that is a pretty spirited battle. Here comes Williams to challenge Keith Rocco. Can't get close enough this time around. But Rocco knows that Williams is in the neighborhood. He certainly does, and Eric Byrne is still all over the back bumper of the man that sets in second. So Williams is right there. Now, as they come off the turn, look at Williams. He's got that momentum going again. Will he give us another one of those quick moves in and out? No, he does not. And here comes Eric Byrne again, getting a second win, and Dowling is there, along with Joey Cipriano. So let's see what happens now when they go into turn number three. Will it be a five-hour energy move for Ronnie Williams? He is still waiting. Burnt settling into third. There is a barn burner going on behind them as it is Cipriano on the outside. And Michael Jarvis, who refuses to fade, 
he is on the verge of regaining a top five position. There's no question about it, and Todd Owen doesn't want to be left out of any of this. He's also threading the needle along with Membrino. Off the turn, back to the line, 49 is up on the board. Leader is still Keith Rocco. Trouble now. Trouble. Fire by Tyler Hines' car. Cipriano's car is involved. The Tyler Hines machine hits at a ton. Salva's car is involved, but is able to pull away. Weston able to back away. And Tyler Hines is and Tyler Hines out, of, out, the out of the car. Thank goodness. Give him a round oh. of applause. As a fiery crash develops, Cipriano's car is completely crossed up and damaged. The racetrack was blocked. Michael Christopher did a good job. This is a red flag situation here. And uh, Tyler Hines, who was really turning some heads tonight. He this was a top five car. Yes, though. he was. Yeah. And he is an outstanding athlete in every stretch of the imagination. So the NASCAR officials checking him out. And uh, what a heartbreaker it is there. Keith Rocco has one strategy right now. Get away from Ronnie Williams as quickly as he can. We'll see what happens as we get ready to fire them up. They come off the turn, and they are fired up. And it's Keith Rocco still in command. Meanwhile, Williams is going high, wide, and handsome to the outside of Eric Burt, the Bulldog. Chase Dowling is there, and so isn't the 33 car coming back to life. Here comes Eric Burt again. Bottom shot move, and what a move it is. And it's going to get even more serious as they enter turn two. Eric Burt with a serious bid for the lead. Down the back straight away. Been there, done that. Eric Burt now continues to make his presence known. Here comes Ronnie Williams again. Halfway down and halfway to go. It's good racing action wherever you look in this one. Matt Galco coming back to life. Look at Williams again. Bottom shot move. Still right there to the inside. And Ronnie Williams trying to slash his way underneath Keith Rocco. It looks like he has the authority to do it. Todd Owen has become a factor again. As one of the feel-good stories of the race, Tony Membrino in car number 44. He is six, but Todd Owen is going to take away the spot. Todd Owen just never gives up. He keeps on digging and digging and digging. And speaking of digging, Ronnie Williams has dug himself back up to the second spot. Meanwhile, Rocco still works his magic in the upper groove as they thunder off turn number four. And now Matt Galco. Galco is applying the pressure. He's up to the seventh spot as Membrino drops back to position number eight. Rocco gets away from Ronnie Williams on the outside, so he is in sole control of second. Remember, Matt Galco, he complained that car was too tight during the first portion of the race. Right now, he is trying to rabble rouse his way underneath Todd Owen. And Todd Owen is coming. Ronnie Williams is still the fastest car on the racetrack, even though he sets in the third spot with a 19.281. They're still going in the 19 fours past the halfway marker in this event. You know, and another driver who has not given up is Matt, uh, Dan Wesson in car number 92. He is still in the top tier of the field, ready to make a move, almost coming together with Membrino and a good power move by Daniel Wesson. And Troy Talman is right in that mix as well as they continue to work some magic there. Meanwhile, Bowles has also come back from an earlier spin with that number 76 car. 56 of now 100. Eric Burt has held the lead for perhaps the longest time so far. And there's no question about it. Keith Rocco's going for it again. I guess Rocco thought he had the lead for too long a period of time as he is able to machete his way underneath Burt to recapture the lead. And he does it with finesse, and he does it with style. Meanwhile, it is still Keith Rocco in command once again. Burn still right there, and Eric Burn is not giving up. 
He's looking for it again down low in turn number one. And Pennick is on pit road here under green flag conditions. So a serious problem now for the 99. Heartbreaker for Rowan Pennick. But it looks like they're pulling that car. No, nope, it's coming back. No, nope, behind the wall. Rowan Pennick is not a happy camper tonight. And he was dominant in his qualifying race, but not in the feature. Burnt. He is sticking like adhesive tape to the back bumper of the Keith Rocco car. Then it's Ronnie Williams in third, but there is a, some ferocious action deeper in the field. Todd Owen trying to hold off Matt Galco. Also, there is Glenn Rean. Glenn Rean, we counted him out early in the event, and he's come back to life. Dan Avery is also moved back into the top eight in this race. But it's a two-car Donnybrook at the point and it is still Rocco hunted down with Eric Burt running right in his tire tracks. And what could be the strategy here? Burt might want to make Rocco run a little harder than he wants to to try to get that car a, a little tuckered out for the final third of the race. Here comes Burt again. Now Burt has a move off turn number four that makes him want to run low on the racetrack. And now Rocco guards him off that second turn. But Keith Rocco's turn has always been turn three, Matt. You'll have to agree with that. Nobody has been better at taking over the lead at turn number three than Keith Rocco has. But Burnt trying to return the favor as a man with a napalm, Eric Burnt. Two drivers handcuffed together as they head into the third quarter. And it is still wheel to wheel and side by side off the turn. Let's see what timing and scoring says this time. Rocco by a fraction over Eric Burnt. But Burnt did have the leverage on the inside. Now Rocco was able to slip away. Here comes Ronnie Williams again as he rested for a few laps, but now he is ready to go into battle. Chase Dowling has been in fourth for about the last handful of laps. In fifth is Michael Jarvis, but now it is a three-way shootout for the lead between Rocco, Burt, and Ronnie Williams. Williams now, it's almost like he allowed his car to cool off a bit, and now he's come back to run right in the tire tracks of the number 66 car. Yeah, it's like Rocco took a, or Ronnie Williams took a coffee break in that car, but now he is back, and he is trouble now. the back bumper. Down the front straightaway, the 92 machine of Daniel Wesson goes up in smoke on the very bottom of the racetrack as he tries to get back down on pit road, and he is out of arm's way. Oh, trouble now off turn number four. We've got another car up in smoke. It's the Dan Avery machine. As it comes to a screeching halt on pit road, Joe Koss is right there. Joe, tell us what you see. The crew is there. He actually stopped right about where his pit box is. They're leaning in to pull him out. Joe Ham has got the fire extinguisher in hand, spraying that on the right front, and they are bailing Dan Avery out of that 10 car. They have pulled him out. He is now sitting up against the Jersey barrier on pit lane. But boy, a dramatic moment here on pit lane as a fireball of a race car came darting towards the pit wall. You know, Joe, we haven't seen that in a long time, if ever, here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Well, it's funny, uh, Dan Avery is here, all smiles as he looks at his uh, torched race car in front of him. Uh, Dan, have you ever had anything like that happen before in your career? Um, I haven't had a fire. I dealt with a fire back in, uh, in the 80s at Waterford, but nothing, nothing like that. I was, uh, I don't know what happened, something blew up, and they told me the car was on fire in the radio, and. I looked up and I saw my pit sign there and I said, I'm heading for my pit. My guys will take care of me. And they did indeed. And Joe Ham came over as well. And he was one of the first guys to put the fire out for you. Yeah, Joey was all over it. He's, uh, he's a great supporter of ours and I appreciate his help. And I want to thank the fans for coming out tonight. We were putting a pretty good show on. We were coming to the front and uh, finally got the car figured out. And damn it, it just blew up. Well, I think you just made the show. <laughs> Fireworks, I guess, right? Yeah, it's worth the price of admission tonight. Uh, unbelievable. And I, I tell you what, Joe Ham, incredible. Now, his truck is basically about 10 feet to the left of the scoreboard. He's got that red truck. Earlier in the night, he was crawling around fixing the, the guardrail up there in turn three. He grabbed the fire extinguisher that was sitting on the tailgate of his truck, 
jumped across pit wall and ran to Dan Avery's aid, no fire suit or anything, put that fire out while his crew members were going in there trying to pull Dan Avery out of that race car. Probably one of the most wild things I have ever seen here on pit road at Stafford. You know, you gotta give Joe Ham credit. He is a true racer and a true individual that cares about his fellow competitors. And uh, hats off to Joe Ham. He deserves a big round of applause from the race fans as well. Off turn number four. Now we know what Eric Burt can do. We know what Keith Rocco can do. And we even know what the guys in the second row can do because we've seen plenty of that. Rocco has enough momentum and steam, but Eric Burt now continues to run high, wide, and handsome in the outside groove. And Williams is able to bury that car underneath the 66 of Burt. 17 of the original 24 that started are still on the track. The best battle, Michael Jervis on the inside, and he is trying to hold off the uh, Mike Christopher. So Christopher has become a factor. Meanwhile, Galco is also coming to the front of the field in this one. We've got a good battle going on for the fourth spot. Oh, that's Chase Dowling on the outside on his way to go back into the top four. Dowling has been on the outside for quite some time, but now it is Ronnie Williams who moves in and takes over the lead once again. Williams, strategy has paid off as Williams let the tires cool just a bit, and then he went back for the power move. Slips up the racetrack again, and Williams is your leader, but for how long? As they rumble down into turn number three, and off the fourth turn, Matt, back to the stripe they come. It is Williams by inches, 71 laps now complete. They are approaching the three-quarter marker of this event. Only by the length of a stogie is Williams lead over Keith Rocco. Four cars are crowded into the front. Burt in third, Dowling in fourth, and then running in the fifth spot, Mike Christopher Jr. So we still have 28 laps left to go, and Ronnie Williams is gonna be challenged by Keith Rocco again. Keith Rocco, look at the powerhouse. There's the move. Bottom shot, turn number three. Will Williams shut the door? They come off the turn and rumble back to the strike. Closer than most people park, it's Williams still the leader through time against scoring. Car number 27 spins in turn four at the bottom. And that's John Studley who brings out the yellow. 27 laps left. And once again, it was unbelievable action between Keith Rocco and Ronnie Williams. So no pit stops, the cars running in the top four. They have had the same tires, the same setup for 73 laps and they have been impressive. This time, it appears that Williams has the advantage again. And look at the men in the second row. They're doing their share of beating and banging too. And here comes Michael Christopher as Rocco. Wow, they're almost three wide, Matt. Those top five can fit in a fire hydrant, and Galco wants to join the party in car number three. Williams pulling away, but it is Rocco, as he is almost welded to the back bumper of the 50 car. Burt getting a challenge on the outside, as here comes Chase Dowling, trying to springboard his way into the top three. Dowling moves to the outside of Burt. Michael Christopher setting back in the fifth spot. Chase Dowling and Burt are wheel to wheel as they rumble off the turn. Meanwhile, Keith Rocco's car is starting to free up just a bit. But Dowling continues to keep digging and digging on the bottom side of the racetrack. Eric Burt and Dowling are side by side, 76 laps in for the third spot. Here comes Rocco, smacks the back bumper again. Meanwhile, it is still Ronnie Williams, the leader of the pack. So a little billy club action administered by Rocco. Now he wanders to the outside, looking to get some fight. So turn three is where he makes it happen. Here he comes, on his way, halfway there, getting by Ronnie Williams. Can he make it stick? They rabble rouse their way off the corner, and Keith Rocco is back in front with 23 laps to go. Keith Rocco is back in front for how long? Williams is dirt tracking it as he comes off the turn, down the back straightaway. 
Williams comes back to life. Look at Chase Dowling. He goes down underneath Eric Burt for a bit for the third spot. Dowling now follows Williams through on the inside lane. And he has some elbow room there. Williams trying to get the lead back as they exit turn number two. Ronnie Williams is in front by a half a car. As they slam their way into the corner, Williams with some breathing room against Rocco. Meanwhile, here comes Rocco again. Steps on the throttle, pounds the gas, 20 circuits to go. Keith Rocco still running in the tire tracks. Chase Dowling starting in the 20th position. He's up to the third spot. Meanwhile, here comes Rocco again. That patented move on the inside, but Williams doesn't give in. And Dowling is waiting for the curtain call. He looks to go to the outside of Keith Rocco. Thinks twice of it, and they pull back into line. Five cars contending at the point of the field. Williams still the leader, 81 and counting down. And here comes again a strong challenge. You never know when Rocco is going to make a move. So right now, Williams has to be careful. One bobble, and he could fall back to fifth place. There's no question about it. That's all it would take when you've got these times. Leader, Ronnie Williams, 19. 263, Rocco, 19, 290, Chase Dowling, 366, Eric Burt, 393. It's not over with yet. The clock is ticking. There is no overtime in this game of big money action presented by Napa here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. It is a Greyhound their way into turn three. Things are very smooth right now for Ronnie Williams, but he knows it is only a matter of time before Rocco is in attack mode again. Chase Dowling has scrambled into the top three. Burnt dropped off the pace a little, running fourth. Then Mike Christopher is next, followed by Glenn Rain. But here is Ronnie Williams. It looks like he still has as much power in his car now as he did on lap number five. He's actually even quicker. There's no question about it. 249 on the last circuit to 289 to 316 for Chase Dowling, 86 laps, 14 laps remaining in this Napa shootout. And what a race it has been as they continue to swap positions for the lead and they continue to run nose to tail. It Ronnie is Williams, the fastest bullet in the chamber. And Keith Rocco, I don't think he's done. I think we'll see one more major move from Rocco over the final 12 laps. Back to the strike they come. Dowling now all of a sudden starts to reel in on the back bumper of Keith Rocco. Those three cars in a three car bid for the lead. But Williams has just enough extra oomph to be able to hold on to the lead. Back if at timing and scoring on the last circuit by, crazy thing happened and it was the Chase Dowling picked up some speed and momentum. Kind of odd, with less than 10 laps to go. Well, if Ronnie Williams could get his wish, he would like to see Dowling battle Rocco for second place, and he might be able to run and hide. That is not happening. So as long as Keith Rocco is on the track within a few car lengths of the lead, you know it's not a done deal as they work their magic and come back off turn number four. The distance between first and second and second and third remains about the same. Timing and scoring shows that exactly on the clock. 91 laps up on the board, nine circuits remaining. In this, the Napa Auto Parts, 100, the biggest payday for the SK Modifieds in 2018. And Ronnie Williams, that car has been here before and done that. The driver is looking to do the same. Boy, that was a change in driving lanes for Rocco in turn number one as he went very low to try to get under Chase Dowling or to get underneath Ronnie Williams. And it is Williams pulling away from the 88. Ronnie Williams has had victories before at Stafford. This would be the biggest moment of his racing career. Keith Rocco is giving it that extra bit of oomph to try to close up that gap. 
as he realized time's running out. This time, when they come back to the stripe map, there'll be five circuits to go. That's two and a half miles. Check that out when you're heading home. It doesn't seem like very long, but believe you me, it is for these three drivers. It's Same. gonna seem long for Ronnie Williams as he tries to seal the deal. And his lead keeps growing against Keith Rocco. There's no question about it. It's good, good racing still at the point. This time, when they come back to the stripe, 96 clicks off for Ronnie Williams and the Adam Scavora team. Same can be said for Keith Rocco and Chase Dowling. Less than four circuits remaining in this event. And Rocco is not giving up, but he is running out of laps. Chase Dowling might have passed more cars than anyone in this race. Eric Burke has not fallen further than fourth for the entire race. And Mike Christopher Jr., he made a couple of pit stops, came out, had Two. a strong car. Reen is sixth. In seventh is Galco, eighth is Troy Tallman, ninth is Salva, Todd Owen rounding out the top 10. There's no question about it. It's coming down to the wire. The final two circuits. Ronnie Williams' strategy has paid off. The Adam Scavora race team has done their job and homework tonight. The white flag is out. Final circuit as they rumble down into turn number one. He has to be very careful getting by the slower cars. And he gets by Missouri. Now here comes Ronnie Williams, one turn away from $5,000. Ronnie Williams has done it. He'll take down the win. Keith Rocco to finish in second. Chase Dowling to finish in third. Eric Byrne to finish in fourth. Michael Christopher for five. Glenn Reen for six. Matt Galco to finish in seventh. Troy Talman is eighth. Nick Salva, a great comeback for nine and Todd Owen is 10. And then it was Matt Vassar in 11th, John Studley 12th, Tony Membrino Jr. 13th, Michael Jarvis Jr. 14th, and I don't think that's a reflection of how he came to compete tonight as he was in the top five for a long time. In 15th, Tommy Membrino Jr. In 16th, David Arute. In 17th, Doug Missouri Jr. In 18th, Tommy Bowles. In 19th, Dan Avery. In 20th, Dan Wesson. In 21st, Rowan Pennock. Joey Cipriano, 22nd. 23rd, Tyler Hines. Steven Kopchick, 24th. And Josh Wood was unable to start. Williams is out of the car. And how appropriate on Napa night. Ronnie Williams is in victory lane. Let's go down to Joe Koss and Kyle Ricky. And confetti flying everywhere here at Napa Victory Lane. An incredible race, lap after lap, lead change after lead change. Describe the battle up front throughout the SK 5K here tonight. Yeah, that was definitely fun. Uh, uh, Keith put on a good show with me, so did Eric. I think we were kind of the class of the field tonight. Um, but we outlived it to the end, saves a little bit throughout the race while they were battling. and. Uh, we came out on top. I was hoping for, not for a caution during the last 15 laps, and we, there was no caution, so I'm happy we brought it home. Uh, this is their second year in the row doing this, but just can't thank these guys enough. Uh, the Adam Scavora team is unbelievable, and we'll be back here again soon. Ronnie, you've had a lot of success here at Stafford, but what does this Napa 5K win mean for you tonight? Oh, it's a lot, especially after 2015. We got taken out on like lap 86 on the lead lap, so or in the lead, so. This is definitely a good feeling. Uh, they won't be busting my stones after this one, so uh, it's definitely good. And they'll be buying steaks in the Ronnie Williams camp. That's what they do when they win. Ronnie gets steak from the team, and he'll celebrate over five grand the purse tonight for the winner at Ronnie Williams. Let's hear from second place. Keith, a uh, couple of call links short here tonight to walk us through your night. Yeah, we uh, we had a great car all night. Just uh, we hate to lose. So uh, I'm going to thank uh, John Bono, Island Coffee, Arbitel Convenience Stores, uh, Green Construction, Wheeler's Auto, uh, Don Levy Truck and Trailer Repair, Pedder for the awesome horsepower, and Stafford Speedway for the show they put on. All right, that's uh, the thoughts from Keith Rocco coming home uh, just a couple of car lengths short at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Chase Dowling comes home third tonight, uh, part of a, a fantastic show. Uh, it seemed like 100 lead changes out there. You again coming up a little bit short. Kind of walk us through your 100 laps, Chase. 
Yeah, that was, that was a weird race to run. Um, we started last there, and I didn't know really when to go and when to hold back. And, you know, I ran the top for a while and just got up a few spots. And I got in the fourth for a while behind Ryan, um, and Burnt, Ronnie, and um, Keith. And I said, this is a good spot to ride. So kind of just hung on there. And then with 20 to go, the spot, I was like, let's go. And I saw the 50 go for a lead. So I was like, I got to go now. And I gave it all I had, but it was a good run for sure. Coming home just a little bit short, who do you want to thank to get, to, uh, get you here and uh, on, back on the podium? Yeah, there's a ton of people to thank. Uh, SNS Asphalt Paving, uh, John Kerrigan, they're here uh, weekly, of course. Uh, whole kind of industrial gas, uh, Ben Dodge, the crew guys, Steve, Slacker. I mean, these guys, Mike, Jason, I mean, they, they work hard every week in, week out. And, you know, it shows. I mean, they don't give up ever. And we'll be back sooner or later, hopefully, back in Berkeley Lane. There we go. It takes a lot of folks to do what we do every Friday night here at the Stanford Motor Speedway. We've got Ronnie Williams, and I got a paint can with a couple of poker chips in it to determine where the rest of that 5K is going to go. Oh, oh, man, no looking, my man. Oh, he's he's trying to cheat. No, no, no. All right, here we go. Way up in the air. Go ahead. I, you're sitting on top of the car. You're higher than me, man. He's saying I can't reach that high. No, just one. Just one. What's it going to be? Oh, yeah, winner. Winner, winner. What's he got? He Win pulled the winner. Oh. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, there you have it. The Gambler's Challenge. Ronnie Williams takes all.